So when I click the up arrow, I want to change it to my backdrop so I can pick any one. When we started coding classes three years ago, I don't know that we really knew the power behind it. So I can do that. It quickly became evident that being able to offer this opportunity during the school day is truly about equity and accessibility. It goes right along with our, our, uh, our mission and our philosophy, creating thinkers, problem solvers, and communicators. They're thinking, they're planning, they're problem solving. If something doesn't work, then they have to figure something out to make it work. It's, it's the wave of the future. It's a very diverse population here. We have a diverse mix of students, interests, um, backgrounds. A lot of special needs kids. Coming from the fourth grade, I taught language arts, so I've seen them and they struggle, but then I see the same kid coming in here, and it's just really amazing to see the difference. The name for it is 0.11.9 computer. I got the idea for this from my mom's computer, and then I thought of making it glitchier. I don't know, I just thought like a, a computer can't be a computer without viruses. When kids engaged with coding, quite frankly, some of our students for the very first time were able to engage in a curriculum where it was a level playing field. They didn't have to be the most talented writer in order to be successful in coding. They didn't have to be the best mathematician. They didn't even have to have English as a first language. In fact, many of our students were students that may have been disenfranchised in other classrooms and did not feel success in school for the very first time in, in their education, felt as though they were empowered. It's not of a stand and deliver type curriculum. The teacher is now more of a facilitator. The kids are either working independently on their own or they're working in groups or they're getting up and going and saying, hey, can you help me with this? Or, hey, take a look at this. Here's my thing. If it's touching the sprite when he leaves, when the teleporter turn off? Like, my arrow is just, like, not working. The platform is geared towards all kinds of different students. If a student is very musical, they can write music. If they're a very visual learner, they can do something like visual story. If they like games, they can make a game. Uh, but it's not all just game. I was thinking of putting like another level, but I'm still having trouble with one app. The experience that our children have in our coding class and the success that they feel from having complete control over their own learning gets transferred to other content areas. So a child who may have been struggling learning a concept in math will actually talk about staying with it, that stick with itness of, I, you know, I'm just gonna try this one more time or I have another strategy that I'm going to apply to this. So right now, um, you guys are gonna be coding, researching, kind of at the same time. So make a plan, tell your neighbor what you're gonna do, what are you gonna work on? It's a low floor but a high ceiling. You don't have to know anything about coding to do it. But if you do know a lot about coding, the sky's the limit. The education's competitive now. We have charter schools that we compete with, and uh, this was one of the things that we hope to kind of set us apart from some of those too, is that when parents come to visit the school, we, we tout our technology program. When they get to tour and they see the kids in there and the excitement that they have and just the ahas and different things like that that go on. I truly believe that the education that our children get in the Avondale Elementary School District is second to none. But when our children have a more than opportunity in a coding class to be able to apply the strategies that they're learning, to be able to own their own learning, and completely feel the power behind being in control of that, truly is a linchpin for our students.